Hello, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Will El Chapo's conviction have any impact on the US war on drugs? This parliament has already tipped its hand enough to the people smugglers. I won't be doing that. ScoMo goes for the anti-immigrant vote with his new plan for Australia. The winner of the Westminster Dog Show wins stuff. And our animal doing stuff is something exceptionally rare. Top of our news feed, El Chapo. The Mexican crime king is set to spend the rest of his life in a prison in the United States. They found him guilty on all the charges against him after a trial that had people captivated and played out like a real life Netflix series. This conviction is a victory for the American people who has suffered so long and so much while Guzman made billions pouring poison over our southern border. El Chapo oversaw a criminal enterprise which made billions selling narcotics. He killed, he maimed, he kidnapped. His legacy will be one of death and drugs. His Sinaloa cartel terrorized communities and destabilized an entire country. This conviction is a victory for the Mexican people who have lost more than 100,000 lives in drug-related violence. This conviction is a victory for every family who has lost a loved one to the black hole of addiction. But how did we reach this point? To understand that, we need to go back to the beginning and to this moment in 1971. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. I have asked the Congress to provide the legislative authority and the funds to fuel this kind of an offensive. Since then, the United States has spent countless billions of dollars prosecuting the war on drugs, and hundreds of thousands have been killed as a result. Yet people haven't stopped using drugs, traffickers like El Chapo keep making money off drugs, and communities continue to be devastated by drugs. So will this conviction change anything? El Chapo's trial has revealed how his cartel paid off politicians, including an allegation against the former president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, that he took a $100 million bribe. He denies the allegation, and the witness who testified to it provided no evidence. People in Mexico and online seem to be uninterested in the verdict. Para mí, para mi gusto, este, creo que hay peores cosas o hay peores delitos que lo que él ha hecho simplemente. Pues yo creo que es algo que se veía venir si se iba a juzgar en Estados Unidos. Era algo que, que a lo mejor se estaba esperando, pues. And social media has been obsessed with this image from the court artist of El Chapo giving the thumbs up to his wife and this picture taken from this video released by the DEA of El Chapo's extradition in 2017. In the two years that Joaquin El Chapo Guzman has been in US custody, the murder rate in Mexico has increased 2018 was the deadliest year in 20 years, and the supply of drugs into the United States has been entirely unaffected. All right, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. A BBC cameraman was assaulted and sworn at by a Trump supporter during his rally in El Paso a few days ago. The BBC complained to the White House so the White House issued a statement saying the president condemns all acts of violence against any individual or group, including members of the press. Now, the statement did not say whether the president would stop referring to journalists who criticize him as enemies of the people and the press he doesn't like as fake news. A hit Italian defective show called Inspector Montalbano is being accused of pro-migrant propaganda by some people on Italian social media. In a scene from the latest episode, the inspector recovers a migrant's body and appears to have a sympathetic view of the migrant crisis, which has seen hundreds of thousands of people arrive in Italy. Those against Italy becoming a modern, integrated nation called it propaganda. The far-right deputy prime minister of Italy tweeted he loves Montalbano.
And Cardi B, who won a Grammy the other day, has quit Instagram after seeing it for what it actually is, a place for showing off, bullying and trolling. She said she's been harassed by people in the wake of a win and has finally realised she doesn't need it. Good for you, Cardi B. The Australian Prime Minister, in some naked electioneering as a, and as a way to scare voters about migrants, says he's reopening a closed and controversial offshore detention centre. Here's Ezra to explain. Australia is reopening the controversial Christmas Island detention centre in anticipation of a new wave of asylum seekers. It comes after Prime Minister Scott Morrison was defeated in Parliament by the opposition Labor Party, <laughs> granting asylum seekers access to mainland hospitals when doctors recommend it. Rather than leaving the decision in the hands of this guy, Peter Dutton. We have people that can come to our country from Manus or Nauru, uh, people that have been charged with child sex offences, people that have been charged uh, or allegations around uh, serious offences, uh, including murder. And how those many of people... those are on Nauru and Mass? Well, well I, I, would, I would suggest to you uh, that Australians don't want those people to come to Australia. How many of them are on Nauru and Manus? Well, people well, charged with serious offences like child sex offences? We'll, we'll release that uh, detail if it's appropriate to do so. Christmas Island is about 2,600 kilometres off the coast of Australia and 300 kilometres south of Indonesia. The centre operated from 2003 until last year and saw numerous scenes of unrest, including riots, protests and brawls. At its height, the centre held thousands of people. It closed in October when the final 35 detainees were removed. 36, no's 34, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. The government insists the new bill will cause people smugglers to bring more people into the country. So on Wednesday, Scott Morrison announced the reopening of the detention centre. To clean up the mess the opposition made. My job now is to ensure that the boats don't come. My job now is to do everything within my power and in the power of the government to ensure that what the parliament has done to weaken our borders does not result in boats coming to Australia. Opponents accuse the government of fear-mongering and argue that the detained refugees only want proper medical care, not for permanent settlement. So why the big deal? Federal elections are due in May, and it seems immigration will be a key battleground in the coming months. Well, next up, a guy in Gaza has been making puppets to try and entertain the kids living under occupation. <laughs> بصوت جديد بأصوات جديدة بروايات بشخصيات جديدة نصل لكل الأماكن All right, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Wednesday. Gucci has responded to the social stink they caused by making this blackface balaclava. The creative director Alessandro Michele, who will have signed off on this thing, said he is heartfully sorry 
for the hurt. He said that in a statement to staff that uh, reads as pretty genuine. The, he explains the piece was meant to be a tribute to Lee Bowery, an Australian performance artist. The company's CEO, Marco Bizzari, issued a long statement that said they are going to build a global cultural awareness program. A Saudi app called Absher is being accused by human rights groups of reinforcing the patriarchy in the kingdom. Saudi women need permission from men to do a range of things, and through this app, men are able to control if or when a female relative leaves the country and for how long. It also offers real-time SMS updates of locations of, to the Male Guardian when a female in their ward travels. This job ad in Sri Lanka is asking for men aged 18 to 45 with excellent moral character, a good mind and mental strength to be executioners for the Department of Prison. President uh, Maith Ripala Srisena said he would bring back the death penalty in the next couple of months for people convicted of drug offences. And police in Canada say they have identified the idiot who did this for likes and views. She got more than 700,000. Now she threw the chair onto the Gardiner Expressway. For lols. Hilarious. Police have asked her to turn herself in. A lotto winner in Jamaica wore a screen mask to collect his winnings and protect his identity. He's been named only as A. Campbell and collected the million dollar check in Kingston. He told the local paper he knew he'd won back in November but felt so sick about coming forward but eventually plucked up the courage and got a decent disguise last week. Apparently hiding your ID when collecting big cash prizes is a thing. This is in China where people have been known to wear, what else, panda masks when collecting their winnings. Now this incredible photo of two male lions has won the Wildlife Photographer of the Year Award. It was taken by David Lloyd and it's called Bond of Brothers. And it came from far away, like 20 metres away, and it, it came in and sure enough they, they met. And what surprised me was that they, they nuzzled for a good, almost half a minute. They had their heads together nuzzling. Usually they just do it for about three or four seconds and then they, they turn over and go back to sleep. What a lot of people uh, who don't experience this, they, they miss the fact that these animals are just as sentient and have the same feelings as, as all of us do. And they're not lions or gorillas per se, they're, but they're actually living beings. You know, they, they, we share a lot of the same things. Now there was a big and important dog show this past week and the internet loved every minute. It's the world's most prestigious prize for a dog or more accurately, its owners and trainers. This year's Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show wasn't only about grooming, skill, and general good doggedness. The reason people come here year after year, and actually for 143 years, is a simple fact. They love dogs. It's all about love of dogs. And I don't think, other than cat people, there's no one who can really dispute that. Dogs are wonderful, and we love having them in our lives, and we celebrate that companionship. New York's Madison Square Garden also saw plenty of drama. There was a surprise disqualification. A skipper key named Colton was cut when it was discovered one of his owners had business ties to the competition's top judge. Colton was allowed to walk on the field before being excused to maintain the integrity of the sport. Then it was all up to the final six. Burns, long-haired Dushant, was the crowd favorite, but it was King the Wire Fox Terrier, who won favor with the judges, causing outrage on social media. But don't take it personally, Burns. Terriers have claimed the top spot 47 times in the show's 143-year history. King won't win any prize money, but stands to make a fortune in breeding, sponsorship, and appearance fees. Last year's winner, Flynn, the Bichon Fries, has since been spotted at New York Fashion Week, in Broadway's Kinky Boots, and at the New York Stock Exchange. High five too. And in our animals doing stuff, we have something rare and special. Now, camera traps in Kenya captured this beautiful feline, a black leopard. It's the first time one has been in Africa for 100 years. The big cat is technically called a melanistic leopard, and this young female was filmed with what scientists say is her mother. Now, some are saying, uh, our producer Jem, for instance, it's actually a Black Panther come to celebrate its movie awards, but we can't confirm nor deny that. That's all from the news feed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. I'm at Kamani Melbourne. You'll find us 24 seven on Twitter and YouTube, and you can follow me on Instagram. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again tomorrow. <laughs>